Darth Bane, born a male human named Dressel on the outer rim planet Apatros in 1026 BBY, was in every way the opposite of Darth Khan. Whereas Darth Khan began a handsome, even regal, charismatic and earnest young Jedi Master. Darth Bane began life as a Cortosis miner, working for the Outer Rim or Works Company, living under an abusive father named Hurst, who blamed Dez for killing his mother in childbirth. Whereas in the end, Khan's sharp clear and even crystalline mind was completely clouded and shadowed and overwhelmed by the dark side of the force. The connection between Darth Bane and the dark side of the force began as first only a weak inkling, but eventually developed into a keen and reasoning logical faculty, allowing Darth Bane to plot out the long-term effects his newly instituted rule of two could play out for his reformed order of the Sith. And, ultimately, whereas Khan chose the route of cowards and opted for suicide to end his life, Darth Bane survived and continued to thrive for another twenty years after the detonation of Khan's thought bomb on Rusan. Bane was eventually killed by his apprentice, Darth Zana, as he had intended it to be, in order to initiate this as a tradition amongst the Sith who would follow in Bane's covert cult, the Rule of Two. Before their falling out, and Bane's eventual leaving of his fellow Dark Lord's Brotherhood of Darkness, Skir Khan, the self-proclaimed Dark Lord of the Sith, told his brother Bane, who would later be recalled in Sith annals as the resurrection of the original Sithari, King Adas, incarnated, of the location of Darth Revan's Sith Holocron in the Temple of the Ancients on Lehan, once great Rakata Prime. Following the destruction of the Brotherhood of Darkness with Khan's suicidal thought bomb's detonation on Rusan, Darth Bane, with his Sith apprentice Zana, continued their quest for Sith holocrons, leading them to the world of Tython in search of the holocron of Belaya Darzu, as well as Bane to Pakrith in search of that of Darth Andadu. Finally, in 980 BBY, Bane, who had taken on an additional apprentice, Iktachi female assassin Darth Cognus, to spite his own rule of two and provoker, succeeded in whipping up his first apprentice, Darth Zana, into such a frenzy of jealousy that she was able to kill him, and to thus initiate his prophetic forecasts for future events and set them into motion. After finding Zana, then still only a youngling, but nevertheless recruited to Rusan to fight and die for Jedi Lord Hoth's army of light, to be the final survivor on the otherwise utterly decimated wasteland of Rusan, following Khan's detonation of the Thought Bomb. Darth Bane trained Zana as his Sith apprentice. Bane was twenty-six when they first met. Zana was ten. Zana ran several covert missions for Bane that would be typical of the sort performed for their masters by Sith apprentices for the following millennium under Bane's rule of two. She organized the Anti-Republic Liberation Front under Hetan 
to stage a failed assassination attempt on then Supreme Chancellor Tarsus Valorum. Infiltrated the Jedi Temple archives and destroyed the mind and eventually life of her own one-handed cousin whose missing hand Zana had taken. The young Rusan urchin, Derovit, by tricking the Jedi chasing them into killing him in the false belief he was actually the mysterious Dark Lord of the Sith they sought, which allowed Zana and Bane to escape Tython into utter seclusion. Zana later took first Dark Jedi Set Hearth, and ultimately instead Bane's own second student, Darth Cognus, as her apprentices. Darth Cognus had originally been hired to hunt down Bane by Princess Sarah, now ruler of the planet Doan, but formerly raised on Ambria, a small planet where Bane and Zana had blackmailed and then murdered a local healer named Caleb, who turned out to have been Princess Sarah's father. Cognus, some twenty years following the supposed destruction of the Sith on Rusan, successfully ambushed, captured, and brought to Doan for imprisonment and torture the acting Dark Lord of his own reformed order of the Sith, Darth Bane himself. Following a skirmish against Zana's temporary apprentice, the Dark Jedi set hearth in a Doan hangar bay, Cognus pledged allegiance to Darth Bane, and again, Following the duel between Darth Bane and Darth Zana, Cognus pledged her allegiance now to Darth Zana, who took Cognus as her Sith apprentice. Thus, in time, Darth Cognus, presumably following the unknown date of death of Darth Zana, her own Sith master, took on as her apprentice an intended heir the three-eyed male human mutant named Darth Millennial. Although Darth Millennial was able to see the future, he was unable to see the long-term value of such an arbitrary restriction as the rule of two, and eventually he was excommunicated from the reformed order by Darth Zana and fled from her retribution to the ancient homeworld of the reformed Sith Empire, Drummond Koss. From Drummond Koss, Darth Millennial declared himself the supreme prophet of the Dark Side and founded what would later come to be the Prophets of the Dark Side cult there, a religious sect devoted to Sith magic and mind control, only rediscovered during the tenure of then-Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, better known now as Darth Sidious. Following the failure to adhere to the strict Rule of Two mandate of the Reformed Order, Darth Cognus had banished Darth Millennial, and next sought out another suitable candidate for apprenticeship in the ways of the Sith. It was not long before the Force provided one for her in the already well-skilled Dark Side Phantom Apparition Projection Technique Method Master, then dubbed Darth Vectivus. Vectivus had worked well into his adult years managing Jonax Mine 811B Asteroid Mining Colony near the planet Bimiel in the MZX32905 star system, which, it turned out eventually, was haunted due to being located on top of a strong dark side force anomaly that was gradually driving his workers insane and causing them to revert in behavioral traits to a condition like the indigenous sentient Minox, and eventually forcing Vectivus to intentionally railroad the mine underwater 
financially to induce it to be closed and condemned, allowing him to purchase the property and eventually build a mansion there where he lived to old age, surrounded by his friends and family. Darth Vectivus, the happy, dark lord of this Sith, incorporated his fiduciary common sense with the dark side power-inducing teachings of the Sith holocrons held by Darth Cognus and managed to come out on top. Darth Vectivus trained as his apprentice a male dark lord of the Sith named Darth Guile, who, in turn, following Darth Vectivus's death, took as his apprentice Darth Gravid. Of Darth Vectivus's apprentice, Darth Guile, history can currently tell us nothing. Of Darth Guile's apprentice, Darth Gravid, we know only that he has ultimately left the Reformed Order and placed a binding hex onto a specific portion of ancient Sith knowledge regarding the survival of the Force Spirit by essence transfer, such that no Sith should subsequently ever discover its existence. Darth Gravid, the mild Dark Lord of the Sith, was, in turn, murdered by his apprentice, Darth Gain, a female Twi'lek, whom lost an arm, a shoulder, and half of her face in her duel with Sith Master Gravid. Darth Gain, who was the apprentice of Darth Gravid the Mild, took, as her own apprentice, the Twi'lek Darth Ramaj, a little-known molecular chemist and metallurgist, working on combining bota and pyronium. His contributions to the Reformed Order, along with his holocron lost by Darth Vader in 18 BBY, have been forgotten as irrelevant to the Reformed Order's overall schemes.